a couple other things to do with the camper that you might find useful. One, I peeled the foam off here a long time ago because it was splitting and it was just, you couldn't stop it. I cut it off and it, and it still kept splitting. So I just bought this off Amazon. Go to the johnnyoshow.com slash promotions. You'll find it there in my Amazon stuff. It's just the thing you get for a baseball bat called hot glove and uh, just put that on there. It feels nice and comfy to grab and I think that works well. Let me show you what I've done in the camper. conditioning's on right now, but we also want the fan. Right now we have it on auto low, so it'll kick the AC off when it gets cool enough in here so you don't have to hear it. And then we got a Hurricane fan. It's a 12 inch. They didn't have an 8 inch in stock at the time. 8 inch might be better, but this works. So we're, we're good with it. I'm going to keep it and I'll show you what I did. So here we have it and it's got the handy dandy cords here to adjust its speed while it's not remote control, it's remote control. So. And you can cause it to rotate. So it works really handy for that. You can reach it pretty well from here on the bed. And the nice part is, it comes right off. And this is plenty sturdy. The screws, I just put it right here. Make sure you're low enough to get this thing hooked because if you go too high, you won't be able to slide it up and down. So I put it right here, it catches, it's solid. That ain't going nowhere. It's not hanging on the wall while we're traveling. So it works perfect for that. This is the 12 inch and it does actually fit here just fine. It provides plenty of airflow. If you were over in the kitchen, you could just turn it over to the kitchen and you'd have tons of airflow keeping you cool. And then as you saw, we did this upgrade last year. Uh, it has the Bluetooth controller on it and uh, that's in another video and you can adjust these vents. This, this was a huge deal. Comfort wise, not having to hear the AC run 24 seven when it's cool in here, having it turn on only when you actually need it, that's a big deal. And again, this is a wonderful addition because now we've got air moving uh, even without it. It's not a DC fan, but honestly, I wanted to make sure this fan had some power behind it. We've already got a DC fan that we can use that's already in the bathroom and you can open windows and that'll circulate air out just fine. So I wasn't concerned about getting another DC fan. Uh, if, it's, if we're on solar or whatever and we, we have to conserve power, we have a DC fan for that that already does the job and works really pretty decent and it doesn't take up extra space. I wanted a fan that was gonna move some air. I wanted a fan that would uh, cover exactly where we wanted it and that thing did it. You can get the 8 inches for around 40 bucks, the 18 inches which would be way too big for this camper around 70 bucks, 60 bucks. I think I paid roughly around 50 bucks for the 12 inch. But that's a great addition. Again, you'll be able to find it at the johnnyoshow.com slash promotions. You'll be able to find that fan uh, through my Amazon links. Um, so if you decide you want to buy a fan like that, it, I really like it. The solar on this camper is really weak. If you're looking to buy a Geo Pro or any camper that's pre-fitted with solar, um, it won't matter if it's a Geo Pro or not, but any of them, they can be really gimmicky uh, as opposed to if you can order your own gear. So just don't be suckered into that. 100 watts isn't gonna really do much for you. Here's why. They're probably gonna put standard lead acid batteries on your camper and if you buy a 100 watt panel it's never going to get you 100 watts even in perfect conditions even if you even if you had it at the peak perfect temperature for that solar panel to be 100 percent efficient it's still got to be aiming at the sun 100 percent right the sun is only straight up at noon you're not gonna get sunlight on it as much as you need in the morning or in the evening as it's going down because 
the panels on the top of the roof and all it's going to be is a trickle charger for your batteries at best. 100 watts isn't going to do anything for you. So if you think you're buying a camper because it's solar and you can go boondocking with it and it's got a 100 watt panel on it and it's got lead acid batteries, it's not going to do anything for you. you it, don't even use that as a reason to buy the camper. If you're really wanting something like that, don't just just add your own solar. Just add your own. Or better yet, just run a generator. So we bought our generator off Amazon on Amazon Prime Day for it's a 2100 watt Westinghouse, 1800 watt continuous. It was 333 bucks. <laughs> That's all it was. And the thing works great. But if you're, if you're buying your camper new, and if, if the dealer gives you choice, just get it with batteries that are like Battleborn batteries, the LiPo batteries. Here's why. Some battery science for you. If you have a 100 watt panel, more than likely it's not a 12 volt panel. It's not a 24 volt panel, it's a 12 volt in the sense it's for a 12 volt circuit, but it's not a 12 volt panel. It's more than likely an 18 volt panel. So when you get a 100 watt panel, they're saying so many amps times 18 volts is going to give you your 100 watts. Buying a solar panel and saying, oh wow, I've got 100 watts up there, doesn't mean anything. Take it, find out the voltage, it says 18 volts, take the 100 watts, divide it by 18, and that's your amps. That's really what you're going to get. At best, at best, that's what you're going to get is those amps, not the watts. The watts don't mean diddly because unless you have the correct charge controller which none of these campers come with they come with just a pulse width modulation charging controller that's it they don't come with a multi-point power tracking charging controller they don't so what that means is they just make sure you don't overcharge your battery that's all it means and it just you know some pulsing to help desulfate your battery and stuff like that but the point is it doesn't negotiate the voltage to match your battery. So what that means is if you buy a 100 watt panel at 18 volts, that doesn't mean you got 100 watts. Take 100 watts, divide it by 18, that's your amps. Whatever that amps is, is with the most that panel can put out. So if that amps is eight amps, which it wouldn't be on 18 volts, it'd be like five or six or something. But, but my point is, you then take that amperage and you multiply it by what your battery charge level is at the time. So let me give you a scenario. Let's say you were able to get 100% of the power that that panel could generate amperage wise. And we're gonna just say that that panel comes to five amps. That panel can produce five amps because that's all that we care about. We don't care about what it says on wattage because it doesn't mean diddly unless you have the right kind of charge controller. So if you're getting five amps at 14 volts, you're getting 70 watts. That's what you're gonna get out of that panel. But then you use your battery, the sun comes over, it can't keep up, your battery gets down to 13 volts. And you got five amps times 13 volts. 65 watts is all your, your solar panel's going to put into that battery. Plus you're using it at the same time, okay? And you're still draining your battery and you can't figure out why, okay? So now, <laughs> Now it gets down to 12 volts. So what are you really putting into that battery? 60 watts. So even though 18 volts times five, even though that might be a 90 watt panel, it's not really giving you 90 watts. Cause like I said, you're gonna start at 75, then 70, then 65. And now you ran your battery down for the day and you're down to 12 volts. You don't really want to go to low that. You're going to start ruining your batteries. Even say, say you, you, you're you strapped and you run your heater all night because uh, you had to, and it gets down to 11 volts. That means the next day the sun comes up. Guess what? The morning the sun is not hardly hitting your panel. So you can't even count that as being full power. So, But let's say it was full power again and you're getting your, your five amps. Five times 11 is 55 watts. That's all you're getting out of that 90 watt panel. That's the best possible scenario because your battery is at 11 volts. That's it. That's it. That's all you're going to get. So your 100 watt panel at best, if your battery is depleted, is only going to give you 
50% of what it's rated for. But that rating is not even valid because that rating is based on perfect temperature ranges and the age of the panel. As the panel gets older, it becomes less efficient. If the panel gets hotter, it becomes less efficient. And guess what? What comes with sun? Heat. So a 100 watt panel is not a 100 watt panel. <laughs> then take this and add this to the fact is they put it on top of your camper. So you're not even getting 100% of the sunlight until it's noon. It's a waste of money and time to buy a camper because you think it's got a solar panel and you're gonna go do boondocking. If you're gonna do your own system, all right, if you wanna have panels on the roof, you shouldn't be climbing up on your roof all the time anyway because it's really not designed for that, it's designed for maintenance but maybe put them on some kind of hinge. To raise and lower to point towards the sun. Even if you just put them in one position for the day, they shouldn't be flat. They should be angled so they'll get more sun throughout the day. That's the first thing. Or don't even put panels on the roof, but then you're gonna to have to haul panels. So you're gonna put them on the ground and tie them in that way. That's the first thing. Two, do not have a standard pulse width modulation charge controller. Get a multi-power point tracking charge controller, MPPT. What that means is it says, hey, my battery's at 11 volts, but my panel is putting out 18 volts. We know the battery can't use that because it's only gonna use the five amps that I'm getting. So what the multi-point power tracker charge controller does is says, okay, let's convert the panel voltage coming out, which is 18 times five, which is 90 watts. So if it was doing 90 watts, what the multi power point tracking charge controller does is says, let's step that down and convert it to real wattage the battery can use. So it takes the 18 volts and the 5 amps and converts it to 11 volts and a little over 8 amps. It converts it to a voltage that your battery will use to charge because that's the way lead acid batteries work. Now, there is another option. If you're not gonna have a multi-power point tracking charge controller, which they're not that expensive, they're a couple hundred bucks. If you're not gonna have that, if, if you're buying a camper for, for the solar, it's not really gonna be, it's probably not gonna be that great just custom engineer your own solar system or just buy a generator and a three gallon rotoplex tank and attach it to your camper and forget the whole solar thing it's it's literally you could have some decent batteries those batteries get decent batteries you realize you could have I could have four battle born batteries for the weight of these two batteries four of them if I'm driving down the road, they're charging anyway. If the camper's plugged in, they're charging anyway. If I have a generator, they're charging anyway. Don't even waste your time with the solar. Those batteries are gonna be charged. Four of those battle-borne batteries are gonna last you several days. And like I said, you could have a generator and power it up, <laughs> a 100 watt panel, think about it, a 100 watt panel. A 100 watt panel, even if it worked 10 hours during the day and gave you the full 100 watts, which it can't, that's only a 1,000 watts. A 1,000 watts. I could run my generator, 18 watt generator on max, <sighs> on max for 30 minutes and charge those batteries. Well, really, you can't charge them that fast, but that's, you, you get my point. It's, it's not feasible because you're not going to get 100 watts out of those panels. You're going to get about 50 watts out of those panels because you're not going to have 100% of sunlight for 10 hours in the day. You're not going to have probably 50% of sunlight for 10 hours in the day because of where it's positioned. And then because of how the battery system works and how charge controls work, you're not even gonna get that. So like I said, even if you got 50% of that 100 watt, 
you could run your generator for 15 to 30 minutes and charge your batteries up. Is that really worth the hassle of even dealing with solar? I don't think it is. It's just not. Three gallons. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do the math. Three gallons of gas. Three gallons of gas will run my generator on idle mode for roughly 30 hours. 30 hours on idle mode with three gallons of gas. Do the math. Even running on idle mode, which is one quarter, one quarter of 1800 watts is 450 watts. 450 watts for 30 hours. All right. The panel is going to give you at best 50%, 500 watts in a 10 hour day. 500 watts in a 10 hour day. So I could run that generator one hour a day and have 450 watts. And I could run it on three gallons of gas for 30 days and have the same power as a 100 watt panel sitting on my roof. Don't obsess about the solar. It's not worth it. You're not going to be able to run your AC on it. I can run my AC on this if I wanted to. Yeah, it's not going to last for 30 days. But my point is, three gallons of gas will last you about 30 days of the same amount of energy you're going to get out of that 100 watt panel. So what is that? Three gallons of gas, even if you're paying California prices that we paid in Big Sur of $6 a gallon, 18 bucks for a month. And you're going to have it. Whether it rained all day, whether it was completely sunny, whether it was no sun at all, whether it doesn't matter, you're going to have it. Solar doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It's, it, it, it doesn't, unless you're going to be somewhere that you really can't go get gas for 30 days, then it would make sense. Yeah. Uh, unless you're going to go a big array. But then again, a big array, more weight. More weight? Why you buy the Geo Pro? You buy it because you want it to be light. So where, where are you going with this? It doesn't make sense. So enough of my rant with that, but just something to think about.